Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me here today. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to explain how all this stuff works, but I want to explain to you the, the implications of it. And uh, we know we've just been hearing about the collaborative economy or the sharing economy. And you're going to notice that uh, one of the most important things about collaborating with human beings, uh, it's not so much just the interaction, but also when uh, it comes to the payments. And you're going to see that in the world that we live today, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of friction around that sort of thing and a lot of mistrust, in fact. And we have a lot of major institutions that are there that insert themselves in between people to be able to uh, create that uh, level of trust. So, you know, human beings are, are remarkable creatures. You know, with our God-given uh, creative spirit, we create miracles every day. Uh, if you think about the history of, of humankind, it's, it's uh, been a story of our inventiveness and our ingenuity. But uh, even though we have this insatiable appetite uh, and desire for uh, upgrades and new features, when it comes to really new things, we have this kind of universal response to it. You know, it's always fear and skepticism. Is this going to work? Do I need this? But what does it mean for society? Is it, is there, is, is it going to uh, 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 limit us in some way? Is it going to uh, create new dangers that we have to look out for? Uh, but not only that, you know, there's also the incumbents. There's always the, 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 the people or the institutions and the organizations that uh, uh, have quite a, a nice place in society because uh, uh, the, 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 a new technology that comes along, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't exist yet, that will disrupt them. But uh, there's always a pushback when it uh, comes to, to uh, uh, new technologies. Now, if we think about the, the technology that is, uh, that is the, all the ones that have come before, if you think about the telephone or uh, the television or um, a radio, if you look at them, if you go and research, people didn't embrace those technologies uh, right away. You know, when we think about the, the radio, we think, well, that's a really cool uh, device, and you can listen to music and all that. But uh, uh, people were very worried about radios. They thought, well, now no one's ever going to want to go out and meet people and go to shows. They're going to go sit in their dark room and just listen to the radio. The same thing with telephones. You know, now we're never going to go and speak to people face to face. We're going to, uh, you know, be, uh, always be able to speak to people remotely. Uh, if you think about social media today, I know when social media started coming onto the scene, even today, you know, people think about those friends, those thousands of friends that you have that you'll never meet. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we, there's this notion that social media is almost like an anti-social media, where it's about these, connection, these, uh, these very limited, superficial connections that uh, are, at, at the end of the day, just meaningless and just there to kind of feed your narcissism or, or whatever it is. So we have this notion that technology is wonderful, but uh, there's always the situation where this new thing comes along and uh, it, it kind of makes us feel uneasy and, and uncertain. And uh, one of the most most important things about this, these exponential technologies that we've been hearing about is that you have to stay nimble. You have to have an open mind and you have to think, well, okay, it doesn't make sense to me right now because, you know, when a new technology comes along, it's not perfect. It's buggy and it's, you know, it's, 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 it's funny and it doesn't really make sense. Uh, but you should have a, an understanding, especially since of where we've come before, where we've seen how these little ideas suddenly turn into these massive things that completely transform our lives and we, and we, we cannot live without them. Now, a very important thing about uh, human beings is the fact that we communicate. You know, we're, we're, we're separate from animals where we can transfer information, and we have these very complex societies that come out of that, this ability to communicate. And uh, if you just think about, you know, Gutenberg, when he created the press, there was, uh, uh, it was remarkable if you think back in it, but in those days it was, again, this sort of uneasiness around being able to now just publish and be able to print information that can be disseminated and everybody can have access to. There was pushback from, obviously, the people who had monopoly over the, the, these Bibles that were being created. Um, but then that culminated now into this world that we live today, which is the internet, where now none of us can survive without the internet, I bet, for more than 24 hours. I know that I struggle, uh, even you know, sitting anywhere if I'm waiting for something to check Twitter or check my email, uh, check WhatsApp. And now the internet is not just about communicating with people, it's about communicating with all the devices. Because now suddenly we find that uh, it's not just humans that we need to interact with, we need to interact with all these sorts of machines, and nowadays toasters and microwaves and you know, your door even you know, uh, can be connected to on the internet. Um, and uh, uh, it's very important to be able to be in touch with and be able to communicate with these devices, get feedback and get stimulation and also provide input to these devices. But 
you know, it's not just about communication. It's not just about uh, transfer, uh, referring information from one person to another or from one device uh, to yourself. Another very important aspect about life, uh, the life that we live in, is the fact that we now need to transfer value or, or goods and services. The world is full of, you, uh, full of people constantly exchanging value, either exchanging information as value or goods and services, uh, things that, uh, that make the world go round. But um, in this now this hyper-connected world we live in, uh, if we were to now think about how we, we transact and how we uh, make payments and all that sort of thing, if we just think about the internet, because I'm sure many of you use the internet to make payments, there's always this sort of, uh, uh, it's not just this free-flowing system. If you think about an email or uh, an Instagram post or something, what you're doing is you're connecting with your, the, the people that you want to, to communicate with directly, essentially. But when it comes to transferring value over the internet or in, in life, there's always this kind of middleman, this banking system, this, this uh, institution that uh, is there because it's actually very difficult to be able to trust when you make a payment to somebody, especially if it's in a digital world, that that money is going to get to that person. And that person who is receiving that money has to trust that if you're paying them, that the money is coming from the right sort of person. So we have this system now that none of us really think much about. We think about the, uh, online payments and how we transact digitally as this just being a necessary part of it, that we have to now have some sort of middleman in the way that can extract a toll, that can enforce uh, controls and uh, limit your ability. But also, you, you, at this stage in the world, because not everybody in the world has access to these services, you now create a barrier to entry. If people want to now transact online, you now need to have a bank account and you you have to go through the, all the hoops. And uh, we know that uh, um, very many people, 80% of Africans in the, in the world today, uh, uh, don't have access to digital payments. And so they are limited to cash payments, and that makes things very complicated. But also, you know, we live in, on a continent where uh, some of the poorest people live, and we have the highest cost of moving money throughout the continent. So these middlemen are not adding much value, but they are extracting a huge amount of value out of the, the, the society as a whole. And wouldn't it be amazing if there was some sort of better system? I mean, we, we think about uh, all these amazing tools and innovations that we have today. Why is this one still seemingly so archaic? You know, a banking system that's been around for hundreds of years, uh, uh, you know, we still have to now uh, think about having a middleman to be able to transact value. So if you think about the sharing economy or the collaborative economy, as you just heard. Um, we, we, we think about uh, Uber, for example. Uber is a great example of where the world is moving, where people with excess capacity are able to now share that capacity and, and uh, on-sell it to uh, uh, other people. So if, this, uh, if Alice, let's say, wants to now uh, hire a ride, what she does is she goes and, and takes out her Uber app and uh, uh, hails a taxi. But she's not paying the driver directly. Uber is sitting in the middle there, and uh, essentially all Uber really does is act as a glorified payment hub. Uber facilitates the payment. But now if we could remove uh, the fact Uber out of the situation, all the value that Alice can get from that driver, she can now transfer that money directly to the driver and, there, and therefore being able to uh, provide the value uh, for the, the driver to have more value in the situation. It would be great if, if that could happen. But again, in this digital world where it's very hard to make digital payments without using the, the institutions that exist, uh, this is not possible. And now it exists for many, many things. If you think about all those people uh, you know, who have uh, 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 abilities or, or, or excess capacity in terms of Airbnb, let's say, like your rooms, wouldn't it be amazing if now people could share their, their, the value that they have, uh, provide it to people, but be able to earn all the income uh, that, uh, that is uh, due to them? So now, um, this is another reason as well that uh, the, uh, the world, the sort of financial system is broken. It's not just about the payments. It's also about the actual money that we have today, and this is a clear example about how a system that we, we, we don't think much about uh, is flawed. You know, we actually, uh, for the last 45 years or so, since 1971, have been living in a very strange world uh, with this big financial experiment, where now we don't have this idea of a gold-backed currency, you know, something that uh, is kind of a law of nature. Uh, we live in this interesting world where money is kind of uh, this, uh, uh, th uh, this sort of financial experiment that central bankers play with uh, around the world. And we've seen how, over time, it, uh, there are flaws in that system, and, and Zimbabwe was a perfect example. 
where we see what we imagined to be very sensible uh, economists and uh, uh, bankers be able to do something like this to their currency. And this is not the only one. You know, in the last 100 years, there have been 57 cases of hyperinflation, and Venezuela is going through it right now. So the system of money is flawed. Now, in 2008, there was a massive thing that happened. It was the financial crisis. Now, at the time, I didn't think much of it. You know, uh, it didn't really, uh, I didn't really feel the impact of it. But this was a, a remarkable event that happened around the world where the system itself broke. And uh, 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 a lot of people were inspired by this to start thinking about a new way of, of a, a, a new kind of money system, but one that was not governed and controlled by a central bank that was flawed. Because of this financial crisis, what we are all now going through today is hyperinflation, in the same way Zimbabwe and Venezuela uh, ha have gone through it. But we just don't really see it at this stage, because all that hyperinflation is not going into our grocery bill. It's going into all these other things that uh, maybe many of you aren't uh, aware of, or, or maybe that you, you're pleased about, like stock markets and asset prices. So we have this, this real problem in the financial system today. But now, motivated by this, uh, a, a group of researchers and developers started thinking about how do we reinvent the system. And uh, a few years ago, this article came out in The Economist magazine, and it talked about this new technology that was more in, uh, 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 the most important invention since the internet. Now, when you hear about something like that that is as important as the internet, of course you should take notice, because the internet is so important. Um, and uh, it talked about this technology called Bitcoin. Now, unfortunately, Bitcoin over the last few years, and especially the last few months, has been going on this sort of hypermania stage, and a lot of people, when they first hear about it, they think of it as this very strange sort of Ponzi scheme type investment thing uh, uh, that confuses most of us. Uh, um, uh, there's this thing about uh, 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 what we think of as bubbles in markets. A bubble is, is generally uh, a, a bull rally where you don't have a position, if you know much about uh, uh, finance. But this technology really has the promise to be able to absolutely transform this world that we live in, uh, to disrupt society as a whole, uh, uh, especially if we need to think about central banks and governments, but also to add an enormous amount of uh, value and to enable all these wonderful things that we think are going to be possible in these collaborative or sharing economies. And uh, if you're not taking something like this seriously right now, eventually it's going to intrude into your life, much like the internet did, if many of you are old enough to remember when the internet came along. This is going to eventually form part of your life, and you're going to be um, moved by it and influenced by it, and uh, uh, the world is never going to be the same again. But it's not all bad, it's going to be uh, all good, in spite of what you might hear. So now what we have with this new technology is this idea of this kind of global banking system that isn't controlled or governed by any government. Now, of course, that's a frightening prospect if you think about people who might want to be able to subvert the system, you know, terrorists and all those sorts of things. But, you know, with every technology, and the Internet was exactly the same. Uh, uh, when the Internet came along, and I remember, I'm old enough to remember, in fact, I was doing my computer science degree in the, in the mid-90s, and, uh, you know, I was on the Internet, and uh, I had an email address, but my friends didn't. Um, and uh, in those days, it was this very dark place. You know, who's in those chat rooms talking to my children? And, you know, what about, you know, all this and that? Uh, and we're kind of in that space right now where we have this incredible enabling technology. But, you know, there's obviously going to be that bad element that creeps in. But remember, with every single technology, there's always going to be somebody who wants to abuse that technology. And don't let that now decide, uh, make you decide that this is an awful thing. Uh, this is really going to have this incredible ability to remove the middlemen out of every single uh, transaction and to, to be able to now have people transact with each other in a trusted way where suddenly now it is possible to have these, uh, uh, these sharing economies. And it's uh, incredibly exciting. Now, um, this is a, a, another uh, aspect of it. You know, if you have this global banking system, you have the ability now to be able to send money anywhere in the world without restrictions directly to the people or the causes that you believe in. Well, one of the projects that I initiated a few years ago, uh, uh, you know, I was working in the energy space, and uh, uh, one of the, uh, the issues that we had was uh, we were building with these prepaid uh, smart metering systems. And uh, I thought, you know, um, this is a really uh, interesting idea. Uh, imagine if you could now put a meter into a little uh, needy African school. What could happen now is that donors from around the world would be able to directly fund uh, that, the energy needs of that school. So we created this little pilot. And if you want to see more about this, uh, there was a TEDx talk that I gave uh, specifically about this uh, project. But it shows you that uh, it's not just about 
banking and, and uh, the middlemen in between transactions. There's another sort of middlemen uh, it's, uh, when it comes to charity organizations. Now, of course, charity organizations are wonderful and we need them, but they also introduce friction and uncertainty. You know, often when you donate to a needy cause, you know, you don't know where that money is going exactly. There could be, uh, uh, they might uh, distribute it in, in a way that maybe you, you don't agree with. Uh, also, you know, there's um, uh, corruption and uh, uh, all those sorts of things. So here, what we can do now again Again, when it comes to moving value from one, thing, uh, one person to the other, we can now remove that uncertainty. We can directly fund those causes we believe in. So we have now this ability, uh, using a technology like this, to not only communicate with each other and uh, uh, create these ties across the world, but also now to be able to really uh, uh, and uh, profitably and functionally provide value to people where we can now get paid for our services directly without having to use uh, uh, some sort of middleman where we don't have to have this huge toll that's extracted out of society, uh, uh, where we can now really uh, uh, bring value back into the world uh, and facilitate all these wonderful things that we, we see going ahead uh, in terms of the technologies that exist today. So I just wanted to leave it with that. I wanted to give you this very quick, brief overview about uh, the technology and to make you think this is not something that is scary because you know I, I like to think of myself as somebody who is always going to be, you know, uh, with it, you know, and anything that is new that is interesting, I'm going to be able to uh, jump into. Um, but I, I know I'm not like that either. You know, it took me a long time to get into things like Facebook and all that back in the day. Uh, and for the same thing with you, I'm sure all of you would love to think of yourselves as, you know, uh, forward thinking, uh, uh, intuitive about what's coming next. Uh, this is definitely something that uh, has the promise to be able to impact the world, but also really change the world, you know, in terms of the society and these government structures. Now, a lot of us, you know, depend on uh, this thought that uh, uh, governments are, are these solid things that are out there to protect us and look after us. Um, but the reality is that uh, something like this is going to disrupt how the fabric of society is constructed. And uh, if you're not nimble, if you're not, uh, uh, you know, willing to now embrace these new ideas, you know, you might very well be somebody who comes late to the party and doesn't make, take advantage of it. Now, every one of you in your own lives and your own careers, you need to think about these new innovations that are, are coming along. As you, as you heard earlier, with these, or these exponential technologies. Because, you know, you might be trying to achieve something in your sphere, uh, but you're being held back for whatever reason. So you have to be nimble. You have to be open-minded about these things. And yes, of course, when you're first confronted with them, they're going to be strange and unusual, but if you are somebody who now embraces that and uh, decides to learn as much as you can, at the end of the day, it's all about education. Uh, your own education, not just the education of others. That, uh, you know, if you are trying to be uh, somebody who is aware of all these things and if you do the research, you will benefit and you'll be able to uh, accelerate the progress and the, uh, of, of what you're trying to achieve. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, I know that was a very quick overview of what uh, is going on here, but I hope uh, that uh, you, know, you go forward in your lives and you think about this technology very seriously. Thank you. Come on.